The terms master data and reference data are often confused and misunderstood. My name is Stephanie Lachman Doucette, and as someone who has worked with these types of data before they had these descriptive titles, it's my pleasure to share with you my personal and practical perspective on data and the application and importance of these types of data. This is another in a series of videos designed to help business analysts understand how data is used by business organizations and enterprises, as well as different methods and concepts related to managing data. In this video, I will provide definitions and practical examples of master data and reference data and explain why it's important to distinguish between these two. I'll also include practical and pragmatic tips to help you manage the master and reference data within your organization. Now before we get going, remember, if you like what you hear, click that thumbs up icon and subscribe. Simply put, master data is data about the business entities and provide context for business transactions. Information such as the names of clients, partners, customers, suppliers, product names and prices, office locations, these are elements that are considered master data. They belong to the business. Reference data, also known as lookup data, is used to classify or categorize data. This includes information such as the units of measure, country codes, conversion rates, the calendar, etc. Generally, master data is defined within the context of business operations. It's defined and managed by the business, and changes to master data are managed as a standard course of business process. Whereas reference data is defined by way of a national or international standard or common industry convention. It is managed outside the business, and changes in reference data may introduce changes in existing business process, rules, or data. But there are gray areas where the distinction is fuzzy and the terms do overlap. Now, let's take a closer look by way of a practical example. An organization will have a list of employees. There should be one master list of employees and this list is managed by the Human Resource Department. As part of standard practice, the organization has processes related to adding employees, changing employees' name, and changing other personal details about the employees. This is master data. It's data associated with a single business entity, the employee, and that data is generally, but not necessarily, unique to that entity. For example, you may have two employees that live at the same address. Two employees may share the same name. Also managed by the HR department are various lists that are used to classify, codify, or group employees. For example, job category and employee type. The list of job categories and employee types are reference data managed by the organization. While the HR team may have standard business practices related to adding and removing or changing job categories and type, to do so may require changes in existing master data as well as changes in business rules and business processes that handle those new codes. Consider a firm with salaried employees only. Then it begins introducing co-op students and seasonal workers and part-time employees. Each of these different types of employee necessitates a change in the list of codes, but also requires introduction of a new pay scale and may require adjustment in business rules, policies, and procedures. Thus, employee type is reference data that's managed inside the business, a set of codes used to classify and group business entities, and many entities may share the same code. That same list of employees will contain information about the employee's address. Employee addresses will contain information about province, state, region, and country. But the company doesn't define the list of valence country codes, these are a matter defined of national and international standard. This is reference data managed outside the business, a set of codes used to classify and group the business entity. Many entities share the same code. The organization may choose to maintain a local copy 
of that external reference data to improve the performance and efficiency of various operations, but to do so the organization will need to check the standard periodically and update the local copy to reflect changes in the standard. Alternatively, organizations may choose to reference third-party sites that have published APIs and provide access to data in real time. Which brings me to the topic of master data management and reference data management. There are some professionals out there who are very particular about labeling whether something is master data or reference data. In my mind, the two are more similar than they are different. But here are three things to keep in mind when you're managing these sets of data. Both data sets need to be defined and both data sets need to be managed in order to ensure the accuracy and integrity of the data that's used by the organization. There should be one single source of truth for these lists within the enterprise. Creating copies of reference and master data to support operations of a team or business unit within spreadsheets or applications or analytics introduces the risk of inconsistency. What if one list changes and the other does not? Whenever and wherever possible, spreadsheets, applications, and other things should be using that one single source of the truth, the primary master data or reference data list, to ensure accuracy and consistency. If using a single source of the truth doesn't perform well in your scenario, a regular refresh, reconciliation, or duplication process can assist with keeping copies of those data in sync. As mentioned earlier, while changes in master data are managed as part of regular business process changes, reference data changes need to be managed as an initiative or a project involving many stakeholders. There's actually seven basic steps that need to be performed, but these steps change order depending upon whether you're adding or removing a code or classification to the system. When adding a new reference data code or table, you will need to plan the change, Make the database change, which means adding the new table or adding the new code. Identify the changes to the master or reference data business processes. Apply changes to the applications that use the data. Actually, deploy the change into a production environment. Apply the changes to the master or reference data as required. And then the actual personnel can begin using the new processes. When removing old reference data or a classification scheme, you need to do things just a little bit differently. Yes, you plan the change, you identify the changes to the master and reference data and the other applications that are necessary, you apply the changes to the applications that use that data, then you deploy the change to the production environment. This is when you begin applying the changes to the data itself to no longer have reference to that code. The personnel begin using the new processes and the new data sets in their work. And then finally, you can make the database change. In cases where it is not important to retain history, the old table or old code may be completely removed from the database. In cases where it is important to retain history, that table or code will remain, but the effective until date stamped will be adjusted to show that the data is no longer current. Reference data codes must be added to the database before changes are introduced into the business process and applications so that stakeholders can begin using them. The reverse is true when codes are taken away or changed. Business processes must be updated before the tables and codes are adjusted in the database. And of course, communication and training related to the change happens throughout this process for all affected stakeholders. So now that you understand the process for changing reference data, you may be wondering who in the organization has responsibility for identifying which codes are represented in which reference data tables, and who is responsible for the quality of the master data and reference data. Quite simply, each type of data is assigned a business data owner who is accountable for the quality, accuracy, use, and release of the data. Working with that business data owner is a business data steward and a data custodian. The data steward is responsible for the quality and accuracy of the data. They define the business rules related to the data and they resolve issues and discrepancies in the quality and accuracy of the data. 
They perform the day-to-day -day maintenance and grooming of the lists and define the requirements related to the safe storage and utilization of the data. The data steward is a member of the business community. Working closely with the data owner and data steward is the data custodian. The custodian is the individual or a group of people from the IT department who are responsible for ensuring the secure storage and transmission of the data. I'll be talking more about these three roles in a future video. So there you have it, a quick description of master data, reference data, a practical example, and some things to keep in mind regarding the management of this data in your organization. It's been my pleasure to share these insights with you today. My name is Stephanie Lockman Doucette, and this is Progera, the channel dedicated to practical perspectives in business analysis and project management. Please take a moment to click that thumbs up icon, subscribe, and share this video with your colleagues. Of course, if you'd like to get your practical perspective direct from me, you're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn or follow my public pages on Facebook. You can find links for these in the notes below. Finally, I'd love to hear from you. Are there concepts or constructs related to data that are confusing to you? Please leave a note in those comments below. Until next time, take care.